Watching. from we don't play for you we play with you what do you expect powerpoint <laughs> it's the end of the day an end of a powerful bold day and so we thought we'd end in an energetic way the only way that we know how do you feel different yeah, yeah you look different <laughs> Why? Because this ancient low-tech tool called the drum is hitting you where it counts, my friends. Hitting you below the neckline, right here in our gut, right in here, our chest, our heart, our spirit, our soul. Everything this amazing lineup of speakers has been sharing with you today has come in part from here, but mostly has been served and brewing and simmering right here. And they share that with you because we found a connection, we feel a connection with you. This is where this happens. This is where openness, transparency, humility, and communication, love happens from here. Most of our lives, we walk around working from up here, above the neckline. And everything that happens up here passes through that filter naturally and blamelessly that we call our ego. And the ego wants to grab onto everything that happens and he wants to label it and judge it and put a bias or a filter or some sort of encumbrance on it because that's the way the human beings are. But when you make drums, you feel connection not only with yourself, a true connection, but with others around you. And that's because the drum speaks to our divine DNA in a language which is universal, innate, primordial, one which we all share from our beginning days because we all came right here from the same place. Well, not the exact same womb, but together. <laughs> Nine months, just inches from mama's heartbeat. And that beat of the drum mimics the first beat that we ever he heard. And it's what unites us all, dependent of age 
and gender and cultural background and where you live and where you studied and where you work and what you do and what your specialty is. This is a human experience and that's why it's been happening for thousands of years literally to build community, to build connection and to communicate with one another. But there's been a lot of talk today about communication and connection and we're losing some of that. Why? This paradox exists today on a planet which has never been more populous, but yet we've never been more separated physically, emotionally, and relationally. Is it just me or does it hearken to the late Ray Bradbury's book, Fahrenheit 451, which was that dystopian society where we didn't connect and the erosion of one-on-one -on -one dialogue, one-on-one -on -one connection and communication and conversation simply went away. One of the manifestations of that, in addition to burning the books, which is nothing more than a conversation between author and reader, is that they got rid of and stopped building front porches on the homes. The front porch, the classic invitation space for friends and family and neighbors to gather and to connect and to share. And the upshot of that is that a lot of us tend to, yours truly included, sit behind and live in our walled in communities with password protected gates and our healthy bacteria, right Carl? <laughs> and feel safe. But the safer we feel, the reality happening around us is that the farther and farther we get away from one another. And those things physical, those things relational and emotional are being replaced by those things technological, not least of which is the art of conversation. So the modern day telephone, do we even use that word anymore? Telephone? The computer, social media, texting, blogging, blogging, chat rooms, all the beautiful thing you people up there in the heavens are doing. I have no idea exactly what you're doing, but it's good stuff. However, we tend to, that's what they tell me, we tend to kind of lean on it to a point where we all become these shadowy, self-indulgent wizards. Do you get that sense? Working behind our own curtains and we're pushing buttons and turning knobs to create the perfect, albeit false, persona. And it's all fine and dandy except for when someone peeks behind the curtain, except for when we're exposed, some weakness, some inadequacy is exposed. And as Steve talked about earlier, some of our ill-equipped youth, when exposed, tend to come upon a fairly nasty upshot, finger pointing, bullying, dysfunction, terror, and even suicide. And so one of the things that lesser developed societies have to still teach and show us, like Africa, where I lived for a few years and came across this experience of drumming in community. And this singular tool right here has the simultaneous and paradoxical ability to not only highlight the shortcomings of technology, but to reinstitute conversation and communication as art. See, I witnessed a third world environment where people still spoke and made music and celebrated community as a community, where each individual's part was valued. There were no spectators. And where the network of choice was the Bush network, which was a vocal internet, which edified and enhanced and didn't mock and dehumanize. And so it's no wonder that in a place like Africa, I found the promise of a new possibility for myself. The promise which a long time ago, back in 1970, looked like this. <laughs> and it took 29 years for that possibility to turn into this. I'm 46, you don't have to do the math, don't get distracted. <laughs> <laughs> and when you find this person and you find this place, people want to know, how'd you get there? And so what I do is rather than tell them, I actually hand them a drum, every single one of them, and I show them how I did it. This is our elementary school, ladies and gentlemen, 360 children coming together, making music, and feeling a sense of acceptance and tolerance for one another through the low-tech, backwards idea of drumming together. 
And if we feel like there are any broken parts in our society, we're better to begin the fix than with those in whose hands the future lies. And sometimes, even the big kids ask me to show them. And of course, I oblige. <laughs> and this is a national sales meeting for one of my corporate clients. And they find themselves descending into our, their chest and opening up and finding transparent, humble, inclusive connection. And the big kids become little kids all over again. And finally, we can communicate and reconnect in a real, genuine way. A way that from mama's womb, we were made to get and to have for a lifetime. So everybody, rather than me, yammer on about what we do. Let you feel it hands on. Pick up that drum once again. And if you will indulge me, let's take this TEDx conference <laughs> to a big finish. <laughs> I want you to be powerful like that young man right there. So let's hang on to him for one second. That's not me. <laughs> but we all come together. Raise your hand. We're going to come together in one mutually supportive community. All of you are unique and ordinary, brilliant and mundane, spectacular and regular selves. Let's share it together here because we are San Antonio and this is what we're all about. So everybody, one time in the middle of the drum. Here we go. Beautiful. Now let's keep that going on five. One, two, on five. <laughs> Sit next to the math teachers. <laughs> One, two, three, four. Two, three, four. Two, three, four. Beautiful. Keep it going. There you go. All right. Now you should feel one rhythm, one beat, one community of San Antonio. And if you can't, let us help you. This side, keep on playing. And don't stop. There you go, brilliant. And this side, let's try something. Four, three, two, one, stop. I want you to take your fingertips and rest them on your drum head. And I want you to feel the pulse of your neighbors, your friends, your TEDx people coming together and sharing their day and saying, wow. I don't know what you do, I don't know how old you are, male, female, cultural background, but I am walking with you and we are one community and this feels right, does it not? Oh yeah, one, two, come back in. Y'all keep playing now. Perfect, don't stop. This side, ready? Four, three, two, one, stop. Check it out, your fingers. And those are your friends, your neighbors, sharing the love. Pretty cool, right? Jurassic Park, yeah. Now, all right. And one, two, come back in. Everybody and Perfect, now on five. Let's get a little swing going in this room. Now, here we go, on five. Everybody alternate your hands. One, two, three, four. For real? Come on. There are like 9,000 of you out there. Now reach down and share your passion. Celebrate this day we've had together. Here we go.
Y'all are so cute. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't always work. Okay. So, we just want to finish this day in celebration. And we hope that you had a great day. Because collaboration is what we've been doing here as a community for these last two or three hours. And Sherry talked about collaboration as being one of the key 21st century skills to take us forward. And I know that's great news for Steve with the kids in his camp because it says that's at least part of what they'll learn in the camps. If, with all due respect to Letty and her views on connectivity, we unplug them just long enough to connect with something out there in nature that they can't blow up with their joysticks. And who knows? <laughs> Maybe they might just, in nature, come face to face with one of Linda's cows or one of, one of Cassandra's worms. And God forbid they come in contact with one of Carl's superbugs. <laughs> We'd all have to evacuate the city, which clearly is no placebo, right, Carl? <laughs> but Ray actually pointed out that maybe while not all of our ills are real and rely on our head for those that are and do, Thank goodness for Colonel Rasmussen and his team. Mark painted a picture of a new culture with respect to educating our children. And while he doesn't call it camp, I suspect a partnership will unfold between him and Bob for a more purposeful schoolhouse design. And I know that Paul will be in there with his trees planting and creating the greenery and the landscape which makes those kids grow tomorrow fast and furiously into the citizen investors that Daryl described for San Antonio 2020. And they will look not only like this, but we, that kid is clearly engaged. <laughs> you might even say nuclear powered, right Bronco? <laughs> <laughs> so, we hope in that school as well, there's got to be a role for Molly. What exactly? I have no idea. <laughs> Nap monitor. Yes. So, we do hope you enjoyed Journey. Uh, oh, the Journey. They didn't play today, did they? <laughs> Don't stop. No. We hope you enjoyed the Journey, which is a very natural thing for Monica's monarchs and transformation a very natural thing for them but not so much for us humans very often as did I we needed a catalyst and Anna found her catalyst also firsthand through the experience of African culture and speaking of culture Lita shared with us how that can have a profound influence on science while Dan espoused the science of influence. Erica spoke to us and sang to us with her beautiful voice and her upright bass and of course Gage feels like we say it best when we say nothing at all. <laughs> but for all of us with any of Mark Menjivar's luck we hope today brought you bold ideas not only worth sharing but worth living. My name is Dale Monin, AJ Alcini. Thank you for coming. Good night. <laughs>